You're listening to the once a year InfoWars.com Money Bomb Special Transmission. And because 2012 is an incredibly important year, we're going from a special 24 hour broadcast to 48 hours, jam packed with special guests, calls, breaking news, reports. If you want to see the full roster of amazing special guests and reports that we're going to be airing, as well as guest hosts, be sure and visit InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. Uh, we got about 15 minutes left in this hour, and I want to bring up Linda Green, who is a activist that I've met uh, a couple years ago uh, when I was touring a fluoride treatment plant that she was involved with in getting us involved in. She comes here to the office a lot and gives us a lot of information on fluoride. She's been an activist for a long time. And so welcome to the show, Linda. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you so much for having me here because one of the reasons that I helped co-found Fluoride Free Austin is because of Alex and listening to Alex talk about fluoride over and over and over again. Kind of hard to believe, isn't it, that our government is mandating that they put a roach poison in our water, isn't it? Isn't that crazy? Absolutely. And unfortunately, the battle's been going on for here in Austin alone for over 40 years. And we consider it a David and Goliath type of battle, especially since it seems that the CDC and the Pew Charitable Trust and City Council and the ADA are all focusing on Austin and squashing us in, in every which way they can, but we are not going to give up. And we, we so support this money bomb because Alex is a source a resource for people to do the same thing in all their communities. We've had successes in Marble Falls, College Station, little towns where people, Alex says, go down to your city hall and do it. Go down to your city hall and go to FluorideFreeAustin.com right. and get your resources and take action. Yeah, arm yourself with the facts. The facts are there. It, there's no denying it. it. You know, you brought in these little pamphlets here. I looked just on the back. Copyright November 1968, and what does it say? Fluoridation, and it talks about all the bad things, the stuff we've been talking about. I mean, this isn't new. This no. isn't new science here. I mean, we're just looking at, they've been able to suppress that information by going around. I was watching some videos this morning because I, I was thinking about putting something together, but I'm like, ah, you know, I really need to just concentrate on, you know, keeping the money bomb going and helping people out where they need to. So I didn't get a chance to do that, but every one of you see these scientists, it's safe and effective. Exactly. It's safe and effective. Mm -hmm. It's safe and effective over and over again. What types of uh, pitfalls have you encountered or I guess blocks, you know, because you're not stopping. I can tell you're going to keep fighting this right. until it's right. overturned. But like, you know, you, you've been uh, met with city council people who kind of laugh at you, who walk away while you're talking. Mm -hmm. Tell us about some of those things. Well, for instance, Alex had interviewed um, Dr. Paul Connett, mm -hmm. and we invited Dr. Paul Connett to come down and speak in front of our city council. And during his three-minute speech before city council, the mayor engaged in a little chit-chat with the city attorney next, door, <laughs> next to him. And what a rude way to treat um, Professor Emeritus at a university and who wrote this book, The Case Against Fluoride, How Hazardous Waste Ended Up in Our Drinking Water and the Bad Science and Powerful Politics That Keep It There. And Dr. Conant told me himself that the interview that you did mm -hmm. was one of the best that he's ever um, been privileged to Wow. To have. And that, that was right as we built the uh, InfoWars, the new studio, thanks to the last two money bombs helped us get it o over there. And we had uh, Dr. Connick coming in. I actually shot an interview with him there. And then I went to Huston Tillerson College where he was giving a speech. Mm -hmm. And he, he really is a good speaker. He knows how to come out and address the issue and, and then take the sometimes hard to understand maybe, you know, chemical terms of how much is fluoride, you know, how much fluoride is actually in our water. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he describes to where just one cup, you're getting what they say is a lethal dose if you were to eat it out of your toothpaste. Yeah. I mean, totally crazy. And uh, the guys were just showing some of that video from uh, some hidden camera footage that appeared after this tour. Um, that was really, really eye-opening where we saw, and let's run Fluoride 1 first, where I remember going up to this pump station where they actually 
put the fluoride into these giant tanks and you could see the powdered concrete. Uh, yeah, back that up to the beginning, guys. You can see the other side of that. You can really see, yeah, there. So there's some shots of, you know, just inside the plant. And then it goes to where the fluoride is hooked up to be deposited into giant tanks. And you can see the staining it does to this concrete. This is solid old concrete. This is, and look at this. I mean, these are, look at those deposits there where this is the poison that they put in at the rate of nine gallons per hour into our water supply. And that's what it does when it drips. It actually powders the concrete there. And then later on, we went inside to see the giant tanks. And what really, uh, really woke me up, and if you guys want to go to the next clip, the front of the building, it has the MSDS of three of human reactivity, which is really bad. It can, it can cause serious lifelong lasting effects. But then you go inside, and, and there you're going to see the number. There's the three on the outside, and she's explaining how it's, you know, it's only a three. But you go in and look at the tanks, and it's got a four on the tanks, which is do not come into contact with humans because it can cause death. Yeah. Death. And one of the water treatment plant was that the board, the buttons and bells and whistles, the automated system was also housed outdoors, protected a bit by some cement walls, but it was built in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And they, they don't main, they say they have no cost for maintaining. Right. The, it the just fluoride. magically maintains itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, go to those, go to those uh, clips again. You could, I want you guys to stop on the four for, for the MSDS that's actually on the side of the tanks. If you could stop it when you get there. I mean, that I think is truly amazing. We just fast forward right here a little bit and you'll see on the plastic tanks that they house this in. And these are huge tanks where they just pump this stuff in. And there's one, look at that, four for human reactivity. Now you go look up on your MSDS scale, just type it into any search engine, what four on the MSDS scale is for human reactivity. Go read that out there and you're gonna be surprised because it ain't, hey, you should be eating this people. It's run the other direction. There is no other, that's the worst it can be in fact. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. And they put it in our water. And this, this. And they tell us it's for our teeth. And they, they make it appear, when I say they, I mean the media, the ADA, the CDC, the Health and Human Services Department make it appear that all they're doing is adding this innocuous fluoride to the water. It's just like calcium fluoride found in our rivers. Safe and, it's and effective. absolutely is not. It's, it's exactly. a waste product, a highly caustic waste product that results from the phosphate fertilizer industry. Big agra, big business, big medicine, big pharma. It's all wrapped up in this nice little package. But the difference between going back 40 years ago when all they had were mimeograph machines is now we have Infowars, we have Alex on the on the radio. And we have we high have quality videos. That texting we can put out. and emailing mm -hmm. and people, friends, families, our communities can come together and take actions. Like Alex says, go down to City Hall and mm -hmm. that's what we've been doing for four years. And the unfortunate part of it, too, is that the media in general, all our local TV stations, ignore us. We've given them all this information that you have used, mm -hmm. and it falls on their deaf ears. Once in a blue moon, they'll toss us a bone. Right. But if, you, if you're at InfoWars or if you listen to Alex on the radio, you're getting the about the only truth about fluoride that's out there. And you need, we need to share this with our friends and families. And I so support donating not only your money, but your time to, to your city hall, to your health and human services, take actions. And we may be fighting this battle for a lot longer, but right now, for instance, we've got a Houston free fluoride, free Houston. I saw the email. I, I think it results yeah. from maybe spreading the news of our successes here. And you've got a council person there who's open to the idea of getting fluoride out of the yes, water. Yes, they have Councilman Christie. So yeah. that he's a chiropractor. So we need to get people in our city council too. In, in, um, our city council doesn't have time for that, though. They're too busy destroying Barton Springs. So mm -hmm. if you can come back later with your pesky little fluoridation problem, I mean, these people are disgusting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, like, I like this on your little pamphlet here. 
Today, fluoridation is banned nationally in Austria, Denmark, France, Italy, Luxembourg, Norway, Spain, Sweden, and Switzerland. And that was 40 years ago. Now, 90-95% wow. of Europe has <laughs> looked at the facts and said no more fluoride. Uh, another thing that we're fighting is, besides the media ignoring us, is the Pew Charitable Trust. Oh, which yeah. People think, oh, the Pew Charitable Trust, they do so They're many conservatives. good things. Uh, you see them on public television, sponsoring public television, and they are doing everything they can to suppress the truth and actually are taking actions to encourage city councils, Austin and Portland as well, to keep fluoridating. And so the topic of my next three-minute speech on November 1st at city council is who is Pew? And why are they hell-bent on squashing and quashing the anti-fluoride movement? And our own Councilman Doggett's wife, Libby Doggett, wrote to the city council and encouraged them to keep fluoridating on behalf of the Pew Foundation. So maybe we need to look into that. And maybe we should keep re-electing Lloyd Doggett because he really cares for us, right? Yeah, that's another thing. Ugh. Even though people think that voting doesn't count, and we do know that the, there's voting machines that are manipulated, we still have to support paper ballots and Bev Harris and the Black the box voting. Issue. Like, yep. I think Alex is asking us to pick a project. It may not mm -hmm. be fluoride. It might be food additives or it might be GMO or it might be paper ballots, might be vaccines. But I would say use InfoWars, use Alex's information and give your money and your time to, to one issue. I can't tell you how many times in putting together the nightly news that I have just gone back to InfoWars, typed in uh, like some keyword searches and found hundreds of articles that we've written that link back to mainstream articles. So it's not just, well, InfoWars said it. No, it's Washington Times. It's New York Times. It's Washington Post. It's all over the place. It's BBC. It's who, whoever else is out there. You know, those mainstream media sources where they kind of let the truth slip for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then they close the door and say, oh, no, 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 we never said that. But we have it. And then, they, you know, they erase those th things off their websites. But then we have it. And that's why... It is important to definitely give to the money bomb and find your cause because there are a lot of causes out there. It's not just one thing. It's not just water fluoridation. It's not just GMOs. It's not just, um, you know, drone attacks, which are going to be coming pretty soon. I guess if you don't like fluoridation, exactly. they can send the drones to get us. Exactly. You know, they, they kill in, in uh, Pakistan. They, they kill 80 percent of the people they kill are innocent. And there's no trial for these people. There's no due process. It's just. Hell from above coming down and raining on them. How would we feel if Mexico was flying drones into our country and killing people? We would be invading them right now. I can't believe that the Pakistanis have not engaged us in that and that they're still letting us use their roads. I mean, I, it's amazing that that goes on and they just sit by and let it happen. And it just shows that we really do have that evil empire influence still today. And you, you do have impact on other media, I think, too. And I agree. like you said, the, sometimes the topic comes up in mainstream media. For example, on January 7, 2011, the FDA and I believe the CDC reported that ingesting fluoride causes brittle bones and risk of bone damage. And they cited the 2006 National Research Council a study that was commissioned by our own government mm -hmm. linking thyroid um, fluoride to thyroid disease, rare forms forms of bone cancer, and then that story disappeared the very next day when there was that horrible shooting out in Arizona and All the right. congresswoman mm -hmm. was shot. And but that story did come out on on that nightly news, and even one of our local dentists here, who's opposed to water fluoridation, Dr. Griffin, Griffin Cole, Cole yeah. was on the news that night. You can go to YouTube. FedGov says too much fluoride. And, and we've had Dr. Cole on here a couple times, Laura Presley, mm -hmm. um, because they're also fighting. There's a lot of people fighting this fight right now, and it, and it is a fight that needs a lot of people. And yeah. it's a it, and you know to see Dr. Connick come out and just give his time freely to really push this issue because he feel you know he says in his interview you know at first my wife showed me some information i'm like uh, i i don't want to see this information those are kooky people and then he started looking at you you know what all we have to do is turn this off 
and and the reason we don't is money. There's a lot of money behind this. You guys are oh, are, yes. are fighting a lot of big money, and it it really is a fight that needs a lot of people, needs a lot of grassroots effort. So, uh, tell us about Fluoride Free Austin. Well, we were we started about four years ago. Ray Nadler and Olenek and I had both been down to our Brave New Books bookstore. Mm -hmm. And we bought a copy of the fluoride deception. And we, I think um, from my part, I bought it because Alex kept talking about fluoride. So I thought, well, I'm going to find out what this is all about. I, I actually thought that Austin being such a cool green city wouldn't even dream of fluoridating the water. And I'm, I'm really upset. It's a green that mask of evil that Austin has. You know, it, some things Austin's really good at, and and they, you know, you can tell they really do care about the people in some ways. And then in others, it's like it's this evil control mechanism that it, it oh come this way to the to the gas. This you know, it's like yeah. this way to the gas, ladies and gentlemen. And I mean, they just really. They have it in for us, I think, especially this council and the ones before them and these mayors that steal people's land. I mean, it, it's just over and over again. And, that we have to and Austin it. gives themselves awards for clean water. Yeah. You know, they call it clean water when they add fluoride and chloramine to our water, which is a combination of Clorox and ammonia. So we were concerned about water and yeah. be, m largely because, you know, our bodies are about 60 percent or more water. And so we figured this is a big deal, even though the media is ignoring it. And so we formed this gr small grassroots group, and we were joined by uh, Dr. Neil, um, let's see, the doctor from the Sierra Club that, that Alex has also interviewed, Neil Carmen, And you have interviewed him, and he joined our group because he's a brilliant scientist that recognized how dangerous and toxic the fluoride is it has lead cadmium arsenic in it and the nucleotides he brought that up that no one is even looking at that where they go to these phosphate mines and they dig this stuff out it's got radioactive particles in it it's just amazing that there's no not as much of a of a public consciousness about it i think maybe people think oh well it's just parts per million but parts per million is being linked to all these devastating yep. diseases and people with diabetes can't tolerate fluoride there's there's pets and infants whose bodies are so much smaller and yet we dose our water at one size dose fits all exactly and that's and, devastating. and, and these, these stores out there are pushing this fluoride water uh, for for infants and they say nursery water and it's really oh. disturbing because all this is doing is brain damaging our little kids and, and I just want to say something to the people out there. If, if you're brushing your teeth right now and you're using fluoridated toothpaste, look at the back of your toothpaste tube. And it says it's dangerous to eat this. Do not swallow. Yet why do we drink it? And the amount that you're using to brush your teeth is the same amount of fluoride that's in an 8-ounce glass of water. Isn't that amazing? Yet they, it's, it's a poison if you eat it in the toothpaste, which is even a higher grade of poison than what they put in our water. And the poison that's in the toothpaste is sodium fluoride, which I believe is also a waste product of the aluminum industry. So it's toxic oh, yeah. as well. On our website, Ray's done a lot of work with the help of a college student originally to mm -hmm. build that website. And right now on our website, we not only post all of our three minute speeches, which everybody all over could share. Nope. And we also have a question that we're putting out to Austin citizens who are about in their 40s. Since they've been fluoridating our water for 40 years, we want to know how many people out there have dental fluorosis, mm -hmm. which the CDC defines as anywhere from white lacy marks to erosion. I've got it. And I, yeah. They gave I, my mom fluoride pills and told her it was to make my teeth stronger. That's what they told. That's what the doctors told my mother. So, so, yeah. So if you have anywhere from like significant brown or off colored, maybe ivory colored markings on your teeth, some of it's extreme. You can see examples of it on fluoridefreeaustin.com. Oh, that's another uh, dirty little secret that I wanted to share with y'all is after um, Dr. Conant created his website, fluoridealert.org, mm -hmm. that soon after that, 
the CDC created Fluoridealert.com. Oh, and I bet it's how it's safe and effective. Uh, yeah, All right? it's awful. It? You know, if you if you search <laughs> in there, they they. So you warn. type in Fluoride Alert, and that's what comes up first. Fluoridealert.com. If you oh search God. that area um, down near the bottom, I believe it is. They warn against people like us. Oh yeah, yeah. Austin. those fact, crazy people. The Pew Foundation considers us a threat. Yeah. So all the more reason for Austin citizens to come out, speak up. You can take action on our website. There's a little section where you can take action. And Ray was smart enough to, to have fluoride to freeaustin.com dot org dot, dot TV <laughs> dot US. You got to get them all these days because mm -hmm. the imposters will sneak around you. I want to uh, get that video ready, CJ, of fluoride part one and part two. We're going to go to those. And because uh, it is actually at the eight o'clock hour, and I, I've got one more hour left. This, this first one's flown by. Linda oh, Green, I want to thank you for coming in. Thank you so and much. This has Rob. been great. Thank and you. continue the fight. Don't stop. Uh, we're we're all behind you. And I, I really, when you came over the other day, I said, you know what? I'm going to get Linda Green in, and just to talk about this more because you're somebody who's in the trenches. You are fighting. You've got your helmet on. You've got your M14. You're ready. You're ready for battle every day, and you take it to the enemy. Thank and that's what we need. We need more you. people like you. Thank you. And we appreciate every time you bring up the subject. Oh, and here's just one last little thing. All right. From the 30s, they used to have these old-fashioned posters that said, 19,000 19, plus right dentists advise you smoke uh, Viceroy's. And then if you Viceroy. flip it over, flip it over on here, this mm. is like from the 1930s, 20,000 plus physicians say luckies are less irritating. It's toasted. Well, the, the, <laughs> there's a similarity here where dentists and doctors oh, yeah. were pushing cigarette smoking and the, the now it's dentists and doctors and the CDC pushing the fluoride. Four to five does degree. And we know. are going to win. I agree. With your help. It, it's, it's not going to tell you much. People have been fighting this and it's, it's, the, it's coming down everywhere. I've, I've, I talk to fluoride activists all over. I share emails with them. We get them on every once in a while. We post their articles because it is important to see those local victories because this is really a local issue. Yeah. We're never going to get the government to say, uh, turn it off. But each little spot across the United States, we're having victories. Exactly. And, you know, they're having victories, too, but we're having them as well. And that's where it, that's where it is. And that's why we have to keep continuing. Let's go to that video now. And when we come back, I'm going to give out the call-in number and we're going to start taking calls. In fact, let me give out the call-in call number now. Let's open up the phone lines, 877-789-ALEX. That's 877-789-ALEX. And we'll take some calls when we come back from this video. And we're going to have Libertarian candidate Betsy Dewey from U.S. Uh, District 25. She doesn't want your money, folks. She just wants your support. She's not taking any donations. She wants to give out a speech and... Uh, we're going to go to that right after this video, so stay tuned for more. It's the InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. Thank you. For more than 60 years, the federal government in the United States, as well as many other governments across the planet, have carried out an elaborate hoax designed to convince the public that fluoride is added to most water supplies to improve oral hygiene. This report will examine the facts. Hundreds of chemicals are added to municipal water supplies, all under the name fluoride. Sodium fluoride and its variants are the chemical byproducts of aluminum fertilizer, cement, steel, and nuclear weapons manufacturing. Children who ingest fluoride will actually get a form of tooth decay called dental fluorosis, dark brown stains, and tooth decay. The American Dental Association recently put out a nationwide alert. In the memo, they warned parents not to make baby formula using fluoridated water. Fluoride is the active ingredient in many pesticides, like rat poison. Fluoride has been proven to cause brain damage, reduced IQ, impairs memory and learning. It has been conclusively shown to cause damage in the kidneys. It has been directly linked to bone disease, bone cancer, reduced thyroid activity. And it has also been proven that it's linked to other cancers. Unfortunately, this is only the beginning of the list of medical issues directly related to the ingestion of fluoride. After years of attempting to get the city of Austin to allow our crew in to show the deadly poison-filled fluoride tanks, we were finally allowed to. 
But the tour guide at the water treatment plant told us that it was their policy that we not shoot video. Well, it's our policy to show the people of Central Texas and the world who are being forcibly fluoridated to see the truth. It is our policy to resist tyranny. So here is the footage. That's what it is, though. So, so there's tank two and tank one. The tour guide even jokingly pointed out the fact that the fluoride acid would eat holes in the concrete and paint. See, see this corrosion here? This is not corroding just from the air. This is from acid vapors in here, okay? So they've had to go in and, and it looks like replace this, okay? They have to take it out, it looks like. Here you can see the pipes where they lovingly pump the carcinogenic, brain-eating chemical weapon into you and your children's water supply. This type of fluoride-based acid has the CDC's highest danger rating of number four. Again, it is in the most dangerous class of chemicals with an MSDS health rating of four, life-threatening, major or permanent damage may result from a single or repeated exposure, organ failure, cancer, the list goes on and on, all purposely pumped into your water supply. If sodium fluoride and its other variants are so dangerous, then why are more than 70% of U.S. cities forcing it on their citizens as a form of forced medication? Eugenics is the long-standing plan of population control and domination being quietly carried out by those who are determined to bring about a one-world government and a new world order. Fluoride was used by the Nazis to poison the water in the concentration camps and slave labor camps. The Nazis knew that the brain-damaging effects of fluoride would enable them to control the populations with more ease. Today, fluoride is being forced upon Americans in more than 70% of the country. This is not law. It is a federal mandate. Because the population is becoming aware and medical doctors are speaking out, the feds are now lobbying states like Arkansas to pass laws commanding local governments to add high levels of sodium fluoride to their water supplies. As Americans are becoming more educated about the issue, many activists are standing up to water fluoridation and laying the groundwork for taking it out of their water supply. Dr. Paul Conant is the executive director of the Fluoride Action Network. Thanks to Dr. Conant's efforts, the Calgary City Council voted 10 to 3 to remove toxic substances from their public drinking water. A few days ago, it was finalized that Calgary in Alberta, that's 1.1 million people, are now going to be fluoride free. Now, many other cities in the U.S. and across the world are following suit. And that's why the establishment is striking back. Tim Cameron of Mount Clemens City, Michigan, proposed to his city council to have all fluoride removed from the tap water and won with a 6-0 to zero vote. Agenda item 9C, request commission approval of a resolution rescinding the addition of fluoride at the city of Mount Clemens water filtration plant. I need a motion, please. Mo motion to approve a resolution rescinding the addition of fluoride at the city of Mount Clemens water filtration plant. Second. We'll call, please. Amber? Yes. Draker? Yes. Gazier? Yes. Hill? Yes. Johns? Yes. Blash? Yes. Motion to pass unanimously. That's what one man did by simply presenting the scientific facts to his counsel. State Representative Dr. Joe Hensley of Tennessee sent letters to every district in his state urging them to stop adding fluoride to the drinking water and has had very successful results. In future reports, we will document the fact that under the name fluoride, upwards of 300 plus chemicals are legally added to your water supply. Americans are forced to drink a literal toxic waste stew that is left over from different industries who would have to pay to store the toxic waste. Instead, our cities, in some cases, pay millions of dollars a year for the poison. The good news is people all over the world, not just the United States, are waking up. Right here in Austin, we're seeing more and more restaurants advertising that they have fluoride-free, healthy, clean, filtered water. Our reporter, Darren McBreen, traveled to one of these restaurants to talk to the owner. Darren McBreen.
the front lines of the information war. It's Alex Jones. All right. I hope you're awake out there. It's uh, Money Bomb 2012. I'm your host, Rob Dew, sitting in until the end of this hour. And we're going to have David Icke after that. So I'll be sure and get off, give him plenty of time to get on. And uh, I just want to, uh, you know, let people know out there that the fluoride battle really is an important one. And if you're if you're not fighting it, and if you're not doing anything, that's a good place to start is by getting fluoride out of your water supply. You saw in that video how one man went up to his Michigan City Council and got it put out with a, a six to zero vote. And this is an issue you can easily you can attack on many fronts. One, do we want to medicate people without their consent? Two, you know, there's no dose control. Three, we're paying to put this in our water, and it's not necessary. Um, we've had, you know, and in fact, Alex talked about the, the hundreds of chemicals that are added under the name fluoride. It's not even fluoride that they put in your water. It's hydrofluorosilicic acid that they put in your water. And go look that up. Go look up the MSDS on hydrofluorosilicic acid. I can't spell it right now, but uh, it's a little too early in the morning. But there you go. Once again, if you want to contribute, let's see what we're up to now. Um, it's, oh yeah, we're up to 112,000. Maybe even more after I refresh. Uh, so 112000 right now. Our goal is a million dollars. So we've got a long way to go today. Um, we brought in lots of different speakers, lots of different people out there. And uh, we really want to see you out there uh, contribute to this money bomb because this is how we fund ourselves. This is how we're going to take it to the next level to make it more worldwide than it already is. We're going to put those satellite uplinks out there where they can't be stopped by um, people, you know, with their hand on, on the, the gate of, you know, TV signal that's, that's going through. This is going to be into people wherever they live and wherever they have a, a satellite to grab it. So we really do need your support. We appreciate your support. Please spread the word. Um, Alex's daytime show is getting bigger and bigger now that we've seen um, Neil Bortz and uh, Michael Weiner, Weiner Savage leave the airwaves. Um, you know, there's room. There's room for Alex to come in. People are looking for an alternative to Rush, and I believe definitely Alex Jones is that. <clears throat> Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. 